is for all you beginner traders out there those that are really interested and want to start trading the futures markets the indices currencies commodities it's all there okay you have to just pick the uh, instrument or contracts you want to trade when it comes to trading and maybe you have interest and say hey i would just like to make an extra 500 bucks a day or even 200 dollars a day in this video i'm going to show you how you can make 500 dollars easy on the day okay just trading futures right from home now what does it take well first and foremost if you're interested in making at least 500 dollars a day you're going to need a decent pc or computer all right you want to build out a workstation or a desktop environment in which you can trade from safely from the environment of your actual your, your own home okay somewhere quiet okay with where you can get to and be able to think and have your own time uh and meaning time i mean just you and the charts be able to look at what's going on in the market now first and foremost before you get started and just throwing a bunch of money into an account or even a little bit of money all right into a small account okay starting off with i would definitely and highly recommend that you do it, just do this one thing first and foremost master market structure it is going to make the difference of you succeeding or not because that's what's going to help you gauge and follow the flow of the market okay is the market trending to the upside or moving to the downside market structure is just the market making higher highs and higher lows breaking structure or reversing and breaking structure to the downside to where it starts to make lower lows and lower highs okay so you have to be able to to pick the direction of the market today i'm going to give you a guide and show you um basically the strategy and how i trade using multi-chart confluence basically using two charts using a higher base chart or you can use a higher time frame chart for those that trade time based charts but i trade range charts here um and then just moving down to a lower base chart looking for our entry point we're going to talk about that but you want to first before you get started um you know trading and someone that's interested whether it's you know just like most businesses that, that people get into you want to do it in trading right so you say i just want to make an extra 500 dollars a day or maybe 500 dollars a day would change your life in a sense of you know you're looking to stop working your full-time job because you're just tired and you're burnt out and you want some other uh, different interests or have a different passion in life what you want to pursue now i will say this before you jump ship for sure and cut yourself at the legs and that check that you're receiving weekly or monthly uh, on a salary or hour, hourly basis just make sure that you have enough capital put away or enough money put away um and prove to yourself within the markets that you can be consistent for a period of time before you jump and ship now the things you're going to need you're going to need a, a a nice desktop environment or a decent one okay or you can do it from a laptop it doesn't really matter but trading from, from a uh, a decent computer is going to be um i guess what would make most sense tying multiple monitors for all those like that like to have multiple monitors or, or like to have the the a real estate or environment space to be able to look at different markets you know maybe you have two charts i mean excuse me two monitors or three monitors but have a build out for a workstation for yourself again you can do it from a laptop and the beauty about a laptop is because you can take it with you even on vacation and say hey i want to trade one day while i'm on vacation or two days while i'm on vacation just to recoup some of that money that i you know spent out whatever the case is but make sure you got a decent workspace or or, or workstation environment including a, a, a computer um make sure you have a charting program okay a platform what you're going to use i use ninja trader some of you guys may use here or charts uh some of you may use i don't know meta trader for example um some of you may just use uh trading view uh trade of eight so there's so many of them out there that you have to choose okay um uh, and so again the charting platform you're going to have to have a broker okay what you're going to do business with you got to pay your commissions to someone somewhere all right so all those things take place but again starting off your workspace environment the monitors your pc all that you're going to need now i'm going to show you once you got everything set up okay all right uh and you're ready to start getting tr uh, started trading even in demo assimilation which i highly recommend you want to take baby steps in doing so in this business from you know uh learning the correct way to trade understanding market structure i trade supply and demand understand the appropriate or, or, or high probability zones to trade which i'm going to give you a a synopsis or just a uh, few examples of what i'm talking about in reference to the strategy trading supply and demand and how i do so but again you want to be able to start 
and write down the steps that you're going to need to take, okay, before you actually get started. That being the workstation, that being the charting platform, that being, you know, having a broker or whatever the case is. But before you start putting money into an account, learn market structure for one, like I said, okay, um, and prove to yourself that you can do so. Go on to demo and simulation trading. And then when you're ready to get started, I would highly recommend starting off with, with the micros. So that way you're not leveraging a bunch of money into the markets. So that way you're not uh, taking on, even if you take a bad trade, you're not losing a lot of money, okay? But let's talk about making that $500 a day by simply looking at high probability supply and demand setups, which I'm going to show you right now. I use, again, range-based charts. I'm going to use my 120 range. This helps me. I always recommend using a higher base chart because it helps uh, you um, weed out the, I guess, the direction of the market or helps you determine a bias as far as which way the market is actually moving. You want to be able to depict, are we breaking structure to the upside on the higher base? If so, then I want to be looking to go long on my lower base. Are we breaking structure to the downside on my on a lower base chart? Then I want to be looking for supply setups to go short on my lower base chart, okay? Now, let's talk about the strategy. 500 bucks is what we're going to focus on, okay? So, and it's, it's, it's pretty easy to do if you are, especially if you're trading the e-mini futures now. Again, uh, this is the, the full-on e-minis. I'm looking at here at the NASDAQ, all right? Um, you could do, uh, you could trade the micros and still make, you know, a good amount of money doing so. But again, with the micros, that's a good way to, to build a small account. And you can still make, let's say, if, you, if my goal is to make $500 a day trading the e-minis, you can still make $200, bucks, 250 a day trading the micros, all right? Uh, the thing, thing about trading the micros, which I'll, I'll cover with you, there is a difference when it comes to margins, and that's all going to be dependent on your broker uh, as far as what their margin amounts or requirement amounts are to trade certain contracts. It could vary uh, uh, depending on the broker itself, okay? Um, so let's take a look here. First and foremost, remember what I said depicting the structure of the market? Well, we're bearish, as you can see, the last several days. So first, open up a higher base chart, and what you can see is we're making lower lows and lower highs following the flow of the market, the structure of the market. And as long as we're making lower lows, but low, lower high, um, lower high, low, okay, slightly broke structure here, lower highs, and then breaking structure lower, then we want to be looking for pullbacks and mark off in areas of demand, high probability zones of, of I mean, not demand, guys, I'm sorry, supply um, to go short, okay? Supply going short, demand going long. As long as we're breaking structure, lower lows, lower highs, look for supply setups. So, when the market uh, around, say, right here, the market broke right here to the downside, 11.45. So we broke structure to the downside as we were moving lower right here. So we broke this area right here below 19,752. This left behind uh, aggressive area of selling where your supply resting at. That's what, that's what supply is, aggressive selling to the downside. Simple setup. Look for structure breaks to the downside where the market makes a low, lower high, and then breaks the most recent low to the downside coming down out of the swing right here to the downside and where you see aggressive selling at where there are say a gap back at the zone okay meaning the market hasn't tested this area back to this last bullish candle to the upside so i'm going to mark this off this is how i mark the zone right here mark this off as the area of supply the market pulls back to this area of supply this is where i move down to my lower base chart so it all it is is following the structure of the market looking for structural breaks in the market structural breaks break of structures either to the upside or the downside to where there's a, a supply or demand zone at, those are going to be the most high, highest probability setups because, for one, you're looking for, because, because the market's breaking structure and there's an actual demand zone, okay, so, uh, or supply zone. In this case here, it's breaking structure with an area of supply back at it. So this is of high interest to me. Another thing I look for as well is that, you know, I, the VWAP, I don't use it to get into trade, but I like to use it as, as like a reference to see, okay, are we – Breaking are we below the VWAP on this move where we broke structured uh, uh, lower and where we create this area of supply? Well, we're, we're below the the, um, the VWAP, the volume weighted average price indicator. So that's another thing I like to use as well. So this is setting me up for multiple means of confluence below the VWAP, breaking structure, clean gap back to the zone, okay, aggressive selling, pulling back. Once we get there, I'm just moving down to a lower base chart. So now I've moved down to a lower base chart. The last chart, which is the higher base, was 120 range. This is a 24 range chart. Okay. That green box is this, that same box that notates the supply zone off the higher base chart. Once I'm on my lower base chart, it taps into the zone. I'm looking to see just basically where the market's going to break structure going back lower. Taps into the zone. The first break of structure to the downside, right below this area here. We can see it uh, at uh, 19,804. 
break structure i'll blow this up for you so you can see it a little bit better break structure below this area right here to the downside we and then left behind this key area supply here that's untapped unmitigated when it gets back there all i'm doing at that point is so again marking the higher base zone supply zone off the higher base chart and then moving down to a lower base chart and looking for a break of structure first break of structure right here happened right here look for on a pullback to see if there's any key area of supply that aided in the break of structure right here there was where there's an unmitigated or gap back at the zone increases the high probability chance of us looking for a short entry market pulls back to it what i'm looking for is a break and close of the candle to the downside okay maybe at 19,804 you get into the trade where are you going to aim for it? that's the next question people always ask and for the the most recent low which where is liquidity resting right here there's also liquidity resting right here and also if you, if you look further to your left hand side this is what i talk about in many videos aim for an area of liquidity it could be the most recent low that price made uh on the pullback here all right and you can aim for other areas of, of liquidity as well but if you look to the left hand side of the chart you can see where there are gaps right here fair value gaps in the market where the market is going to need to fill Okay, the market mirrors itself it's going to have to fill those areas in at some point and this setting itself up because we're bearish to the downside pulling back to key air two key areas of supply one on the higher base chart we marked off one on the lower base chart waiting for the pullback to it gaps once we get back to the zone there's gaps to the left hand side of the chart and need to be filled you can aim for those areas so let's say you got in here at 19,804 uh maybe you're taking off most or uh, most of your contracts here at 92 okay so what is that right there 12 point pickup right there it comes down even further so let's go ahead and mark off where we place a stop at the stop would go uh right here on the back end okay so wherever you you start wherever the market came back into the zone at and then where we get rejection and we get that break at close of the candle you place it at the back end where that rejection happened at okay give yourself a few rooms of, of, of points above that because the market likes to test that area as it did right here it came down and took out liquidity here and here all right and but then it came back up here to stop these traders out to the top end before moving lower market makers love to do that okay understand that that's how the game is played so first means of area to actually uh take profit at is going to be you know any area of liquidity okay or areas second areas of, or areas where there need to be gaps need to be filled in the market so the market runs to the downside you can take out the trade here or you can take it out here well, if you took it out here then you pick yourself up 12 points right there okay so my my goal or aim is to try to at least get 20 points on a trade um if i can get 10 plus i'm fine with that but my goal is to make um you know right here uh 20 points so again this right here we gave me pick allow me to pick up what here uh 12 points roughly right here once it broke below this this area of liquidity right here it came down down to 84 that's 20 points right there so 20 point move is 80 ticks on the nasdaq so you do 20 points times four ticks in a point that's 80 ticks right there 80 ticks on the nasdaq on one contract then that's 400 bucks right now if you're trading that doing the micros um then that's only going to be 40 bucks because it's 10 times less because of the the mar not margin but the uh, um the tick value is 50 cent a tick versus five dollars a tick on, on the nasdaq but still you know even if you did say for example you traded maybe five contracts on the micros which people do uh, because the thing about trading the micros is is that even if you are you know take a take a loss or you're into drawdown whatever the case is you're not taking a major hit all right so with five contracts on that same move right there you would have picked up 200 bucks okay and been halfway or a little bit less than halfway to your goal of reaching 500 dollars so you may have to trade another trade a second time now with the nasdaq we're already at 400 bucks we can just look for another small little scalp to get us at our 500 dollars mark okay or you can break it up you know do uh two 15 point moves on the nasdaq so if you did two 15 point moves on the nasdaq then that's going to put you at 600 for the, for the day okay minus your commissions but still it's, it's it's pretty easy to do especially the nasdaq picking up 15 points or 10 points at a time it's, it's relatively easy you should be able to get 15 points on the nasdaq pretty easy uh definitely you know um 10 points for sure okay 20 points you could do it um but the thing about it is just picking up high quality setups ones that where there are again um high probability setups where there's a gap or the, the the there's a zone that's not been tested yet okay or for anyone out there that trades like the micro uh, e-mini nasdaq okay you do uh two 15 point moves on the on the uh, micro nasdaq uh that's going to put you at 
three hundred bucks if you trade five contracts. Okay, so it's it's definitely doable, all right? Even three hundred dollars on the micros side of things, three hundred times if you did that, you know, five days a week, that's an extra fifteen hundred dollars um, a week. Okay, or even if you did it twice a week, that's an extra six hundred bucks. So three times, you know, a, a week, that's uh, an additional nine hundred bucks a week. So I mean, you know, for anyone that's that's really looking to build a small account trading say for example the micros you can do so even if you're still working a full-time job but even an extra even a thousand dollars a week say for example for some people i mean that's you know depending some people aren't even making a thousand dollars you know a week at their at their job that's still decent money and i'm talking about being able to do this from a desktop computer or laptop from the environment of your your own home you know from your own safe haven uh it's easy to do to make this kind of money it, as long as you know what you're actually doing that's why i say uh it's imperative to understand market structure being able to understand the flow of the market and looking for those high probability setups back at key areas of supplier demand especially where you have a break of structure at understand that because the break of structure i'm telling you is is the important part as well so i showed you an example of what a supply zone will look like you know trading based on structure of the market and be able to depict that from a higher base chart first so now look let's do a quick rundown of a demand zone setup where there's a high probability you know chance of us looking for an opportunity to trade and again try to make that additional you know try to make up five hundred dollars or make a few few bucks on a day this is an easy way of being able to do it again from home okay so if you take a look here and see what, what took place here this is on the 120 range chart the market is doing what we start to push higher and we're breaking structure above us all right so we're breaking structure above this area here you see uh you know major area structure break right here to above us here pushes up as you can see this is a demand zone resting right here why take a look making higher highs and higher lows breaking structure right here pushing up pulling back aggressive buying coming out of this area here there is a demand let's see here give me one second uh let's see break structure yeah right here break structure above here off of this move right here to the upside but it's also a zone right here it 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 rejected both zones to be honest with you because both of them are valid demand zones this one here and this one here the first zone coming back is kind of iffy because you got to look at where the move started at but that does not mean that the market won't reject here we are above the VWAP as it's breaking to the upside here and, and uh, breaking structure uh, above this area here. So this de demand zone is valid. It's an aggressive area of buying. It's unmarked. I'm assuming unmarked. It is marked. <laughs> I marked it up. There's a gap back at the zone. That's what I was trying to say. And it's unmitigated, meaning it hasn't been tested yet. When the market gets back there, we just move down to a lower base chart to see if we get rejection uh, to take the trade. Okay. So let's go down to the uh, 24 right quick. All right, 24 range chart uh, right here. That zone right here, that green box that uh, notates the higher base 120 demand zone. All I'm looking for now is for the market to show me uh, confirmation with the structure break to the upside on the 24 range that it wants to continue pushing in the same direction up. It's, it's pushing higher here. We get a, a minor area structure break here, a slight structure break above uh, 915 or 916 right here. Pulls back. Demand right here, aggressive buying, untapped. Okay, unmitigated zone there. Looking for the break and the close of the candle above. So, uh, for me, once I see price kind of you know push up here, I'm probably going to get in around about nine seventeen or nine eighteen right there. Where am I going to aim for? All right. Well, I'm definitely going to aim for uh, for this area right here. There's liquidity resting above this high right here. Okay, and it will be a structure break to the upside. So right here above nine twenty six. So if I got in at nine uh, eighteen. And maybe I took some of my contracts and most of them off at 920, uh, excuse me, yeah, 927 right there. Uh, and then I would, you know, let a runner run, maybe to fill, look, again, look to the left-hand side to see if there's any gaps over here as well. And continue looking to see other er other areas of gaps that could be where the market could fill. So, you know, it's all about leaving runners behind as well if you really want to try to capitalize and make that $500 Um you know, off of that one trade. Okay. Again, you could take two trades and, and, and pick up that $500 a day, pretty easy trading the E-mini futures. Okay. But again, uh, the first aim, liquidity resting right here, fill the gap here with a runner and maybe allow it to continue to run and fill the remaining portion of these gaps over here to the left-hand side. Stop loss is going to go right below this area here at nine. Oh, uh, let's see here. Nine Oh seven, nine Oh seven. Well, not, let's say nine Oh eight right below here. Why this was the pullback to the area of demand right here. 
Uh, this is where the rejections took place out or coming uh, once the market tapped into that area of demand right there um, originally. And this is where we get the break and close above right here. So as we got, as the market pulled back right here and started to break, you know, started moving in the opposite direction and started breaking above here, you put your stop back here at 908 and give yourself a few points room right here. Because as you can see right here, when they pushed up, what do they do? They came back. A lot of people um, would probably have gotten, you know, not say stopped out. They would have um, uh, got scared out of the trade and closed the positions, maybe. But again, by giving yourself a few points room right here, uh, back down to the downside underneath this area right here, it's going to, you know, prevent you from getting stopped out because the market makers love to test areas, uh, especially when they know people are, have taken interest to go, go long it, okay? So it kind of starts moving sideways right here. Uh, but again, I already got in here at 9, 918. Uh, taking this liquidity resting right here, run it here, and you know let a runner a, a, a runner continue to run. So basically, when you let your runner run, as you can see, we've got aggressive force to the upside. Once it got right here, yeah, you could close here if you wanted to, or you could see what was going to happen when it got right here, because once you it gets into this area where there's, there's uh, gaps that need to be filled, there's additional gaps over here that need to be filled as well. So just want to show you a way because if you were able to stay in this trade here at 918. And then take it all the way back up here to uh, uh, 968. You did very, very, very well. And looking back at the higher time frame, you can actually see where it ended up rejection. And you get the break and the close of the candle to the upside to come back up here and test the highs right here. So, you know, you also look at your higher time frame to kind of gauge where can, where can the market go on a higher base chart as well. So I just wanted to share that with you guys today. Just telling you some things that you need to, you know, to getting started uh, as well as, how easy it is to make, you know, $500 pretty easy on the day, uh, either trading uh, the E-minis or to make a decent income, all right, or amount trading the uh, micro uh, E-minis just as well. You can definitely do so. And for those that trade the ES, I mean, you can actually even make more because of the tick value, even on the micro size, is higher. Always remember that the micros is 10 times less the uh and tick value than the actual full on e minis are. So, like the NASDAQ trades for five dollars a tick, the e, uh, the micro e mini tra trades at 50 cent, 50 cent a tick, the um, e mini ES or SP 500 futures trades at uh, 12 dollars and 50 cent a tick, and the micro uh, e mini ES or SP 500 futures trades at a dollar 25 a tick. So, hopefully, that helps out. Outside of that, that's all I have for you guys today. I just want to share the strategy and how I trade like I do all the time because I want to see people become successful. So do me the biggest favor. If you found value in today's video, if it gave you some insight, if it just pumped your spirits up to allow you to say, I could do this, I could do this, I just need to put in the work and the time, please make sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking on the sub button. Also, make sure to turn your post notifications on so you don't miss one of the uploads. Anyone and everyone interested in joining the Discord, the link is down in the description portion of the video. Scroll down, you'll see the first link for the Discord is free. Join. The second one is for all those that always send me DMs and say, hey, Mike, can I, how can I join the Elite membership to become or gain access to the trade breakdown videos to where that's where I walk through my trade setups, ones that I post over on the Discord, and give example after example of what I was looking for. Uh, taking those trades, okay, talking about stop losses and profit target areas, why I took those specific trades. For $6.99 a month, that's all it is. Most people spend more than that daily on a cup of, cup of coffee. $6.99 a month, you get access to the trade breakdown videos, the, uh, the video playlist, and, you know, I'm, I'm still tacking on other videos as well, like I did one on market structure, a uh, great video on that. You gain access to that for $6.99. That link is right below the Discord link for anyone interested down in the description. Outside of that, that's all I have for you guys today. I appreciate it. If you would take the time to go ahead and click on that like button if you found value in today's video. Take care. See you in the next one.